This is the living room. It's uh, like an open plan living room kitchen. This is obviously where I filmed the so far two episodes of Cooking with Jake. Opposite the sofa is a TV. This is a Philips 43 PUS 6401. Catchy, I know. 43 inch 4K TV, it looks pretty good. And because it's Philips, it's got uh, Ambilight, which is basically hue lights in the back of the TV, which to be honest is the main reason we bought this one. Dangling out the back, uh, just here is a, a Roku. The TV runs Android, uh, and it doesn't have all of the streaming apps that we want, so the Roku fills in the gaps. Next to the TV, hiding behind the IKEA watering can and plant, is an Echo Dot. We really only use this to turn the lights in here on and off, uh, and to facilitate that, this IKEA lamp that's standing next to it is plugged in to a TP-Link Wi-Fi plug, which you can just about see there, the, the HS100. There's also a, a Netgear 5-port network switch hanging out of the wall there. Uh, that goes to the router, which I'll get to a bit later, but this lets us have a wired network connection for the TV and the PS3 and PS4, which brings us below the TV. We've got a collection of PlayStations down here. This is my original PS2. Uh, they came out in 2000, but I didn't get one quite then. I got it a few years later. I can't remember exactly when, but it's about 15 years old. Still works perfectly. I still play games on it. Next to that is my PS3. This is the PS3 Slim, believe it or not, even though it's huge. And then this one is Claudio's PS4. The reason we have these three PlayStations is this is the, the minimum set of PlayStations you need to play every PlayStation game. The PS2 is backwards compatible with PS1 games, but the PS3 and the PS4 are not backwards compatible at all, so you do need all three. Moving uh, behind us to behind the sofa, this side we've got Roomba, this is where Roomba lives. Roomba is a robot vacuum, hoovers the floor every day, it's actually really convenient, it works surprisingly well. So he just chills there. I then have some lights hiding behind the sofa, one here, and then a similar one at the, the back. These are lights by American DJ, this is the Mega Power Profile, the other one is the Mega Tri Power Profile, and they're essentially disco lights but put them on the ground and point them up at the window frames and it looks quite nice. I'm working on a way to control these from my home automation system which you can see in other videos. Uh, to allow me to do that I have this, this box here and inside there's a, a DMX to USB converter so the lights can be connected to a computer and then there's a Raspberry Pi Zero sitting here. At the other side of the sofa is a lamp, this has a Philips Hue bulb in it, so Alexa can control that one as well. And this is a remote, this is the ortho remote for the speaker that is sitting next to the plant down here. This is the Teenage Engineering OD11. It's a modern replica of a speaker from the 70s, so it's wireless, it's got Spotify Connect, and I love the design of it. So we use that for playing music in here. And that's pretty much it for the living room. We've got a few cupboards in the hallway, but this one is quite interesting. This is the network cupboard. When I was a child, I dreamed of having something like this, so I was really happy when we moved into this flat to find that the router uh, and other networking things were already in this cupboard and I could use all of this space. I had quite niche interests as a child. So yeah, we moved in and there were already two routers here, the, this BT router and the Hyper Optic router, which is that one in the far corner. This was a new flat and they were pre-installed, I guess just so it was really easy to get set up with internet. So this one's turned off because we went with Hyper Optic. We have 100 megabits a second symmetric fiber internet, so that means we get 100 meg down and up at the same time. So this is a, a typical router that you'd have in the house. Um, got some network ports, does Wi-Fi, except the Wi-Fi feature is turned off. Because instead, we use this Wi-Fi access point. This is a Ubiquiti Unify Pro. These things are designed for large spaces like offices, stadiums, where you'd have loads of them. But get one of them, put it in your house, and you get really good Wi-Fi performance. So this just has one cable. Uh, it does power over Ethernet. Also on the wall, this is the Philips Hue Bridge. So this talks to the bulbs and then connects to the router. This thing here is a battery backup for the router. Now that sounds like overkill kill but multiple times since we moved in the power's gone out for like a couple of hours either due to a fault or due to maintenance uh, and this lets the router stay online and the internet continues to work and I've been working from home at the time and it's meant I could just continue with my laptop with the router on the battery backup without any problems.
This is a TP-Link home plug. This is one of those things that lets you put a, a network port in another room using the, the mains. I'll show you where that goes to in a few minutes. Most of the rooms don't need that because these network ports go to the living room uh, and the two bedrooms. This, this flat is fully networked. It's amazing. So those three green cables go into this Netgear Gigabit switch, the GS108, using all eight ports on this thing. The router, the three rooms, and then the various servers that are running here. These two are Claudio's, uh, these are Synology NASs, and they're actually really good, I love the software that they come with. If you wanted a NAS, I would totally recommend Synology. This is the one that he uses, this is just his old one, it wouldn't usually be turned on, but I accidentally pressed the power button when I was trying to dust. <laughs> this is a, an HP Proliant microserver. Inside of this I've got four 3 terabyte hard drives, so it's got 12 terabytes of storage in it and I use this to do time machine backups onto. It runs an operating system called NAS for free. I think FreeNAS is a better version if you're looking for something like this. I just haven't got round to, to changing this because it works. It just sits here and does its job. It works kind of like Time Capsule would, the thing that you can buy from Apple that lets you back up with Time Machine over the network. It simulates that functionality. So my laptop, wherever it is in the flat, as long as it's on the Wi-Fi network, uh, it can back up every hour to this 12 terabyte server that sits here. Above this is a shelf with all my battery chargers. And of course, you probably noticed the fire extinguisher down there. Maybe it shouldn't be in the cupboard, which is most likely to catch fire. But anyway, that's the network cupboard. The home plug that I showed you in the other cupboard goes to this cupboard for the printer, which is in here. This is also where we keep the Dyson V10 vacuum. Let's move on to my room. In here we've got my bed, uh, my desk, through there is my ensuite bathroom, and my wardrobe is behind these two mirrors. Let's start with my desk. If you've seen any of my room tours in the past, this will all look quite familiar. My chair is the Marcus chair from Ikea. I've had this for a long time, uh, the leather's starting to, to wear away a bit, but I really like this chair. On my desk, the main thing is the MacBook Pro. This is the mid-2012 version. It was the first one with a retina display. So this is six years old now. I bought it just before I started Cambridge. I used this every day at uni for three years. I did all of my work on it. I wrote my dissertation on it. It was always in my bag as I cycled to and from the computer lab. Then I graduated three years ago and I've used it pretty much every day since. I still edit all of my videos on this, even the 4K videos like this one. So it's doing really well. I have no plans to upgrade it in the near future. Uh, it, it does everything that I need it to do. The only problem it has is the, the trackpad doesn't work very well because I spilled a drink on it a few years ago. But it doesn't really matter, it never really moves from my desk anymore. Uh, and I've got a mouse and keyboard. This is the Apple Magic Mouse and the, the wireless keyboard. This is the new one uh, that charges through a lightning cable. This is the old one that takes batteries. Over to the left uh, is one of the two Tannoy Reveal 402 studio monitors, the other one being that one over there. Tannoy sent these to me for free a few years ago to review, and I really liked them, so I still use them. I know they're not positioned perfectly, but I'm not, like, creating music here, so I think it's fine. Little cactus on top, uh, another speaker on top of the speaker. My main monitor is the Dell U2410, a 24-inch monitor from 2010, so this is eight years old now. I think I bought this refurbished or secondhand. I really love this monitor. Uh, again, no plans to, to replace it until it breaks. I wouldn't recommend buying one now. I mean, it's eight years old, you can get better ones. And then the third monitor up here is an LG M227WD. This one's not so good. This is a cheap, like, TV that I bought years ago. 22 inches, 1080p. It's not amazing, but it does the job. I don't always have this plugged in and turned on. Uh, it's useful if I want to watch TV or a YouTube video and do work at the same time. Above that screen, this big glowing square, this is an aperture light. It's on a, a Manfrotto arm that's like stuck in the top of this extra tall monitor arm. If I ever make a video where I'm sat at my desk and the camera is where my laptop is, this can light me up so my face is not in darkness. Behind my laptop, um, apart from the, the hand sanitizer and the hand moisturizer, there is a, a Western Digital hard drive over there. It's a, a Thunderbolt, uh, an original Thunderbolt 1 hard drive. Obviously my laptop doesn't have Thunderbolt 2 or 3. 8 terabytes, uh, and that's where all of my videos live, essentially. The cables, um, there are a couple of extra at each side because when I work from home, I have my work laptop 
which I put here instead. My work laptop is a lot newer and has USB-C ports, so that's what the extra cables are for. Moving underneath my desk, there is more stuff hiding under there. So this is how I get more things plugged into my laptop without a really cluttered desk. This is a, a big, like, plank of wood, essentially. It slots into these metal things, and then I put, like, bits of wood in to hold it up. And it's got loads of holes in, uh, and then string through to tie various devices to the bottom of it. It's not the prettiest thing to look at, but when you're, like, standing up or sat at the desk, you can't see any of this stuff. So this is a, a Belkin Thunderbolt dock. This is a, another Netgear network switch. Um, it's not actually turned on. I only have my laptop here, so I don't need a switch. I used to have the, the server next to my desk and also a Raspberry Pi plugged into this. I've just left it there because it's a convenient place to put it. This is just black tape around the, the edge to cover all the lights. Since this is my bedroom, I try to, to cover up lights so it's dark while I sleep. This is an echo dot. This is the echo dot that I just showed you from the living room. I filmed that part of this video last week, and in the last week, Claudio bought a, a Google Home mini thing to put in the living room instead. There's an extension lead at the back there where all this stuff is plugged in. And then the final thing is a, a neat HDMI splitter. The HDMI cable comes out of my laptop, it goes into this thing, uh, which splits it into two. One goes into that LG TV above my laptop, and the other is a 10 meter cable which goes all the way around my room. And we'll move on to that next. You can't really see this, but all of the cables are hidden behind my desk. I've got two extension leads mounted to the back of the desk, so everything's plugged in there which means you don't see anything hanging down, which I think is quite nice. So that HDMI cable runs along the, the edge of the room and all the way to my AV receiver. So that means my laptop is connected to this thing. This is an Onkyo HT-R380. It's nothing fancy, to be honest. It just takes a, a few different inputs uh, and gives you one output, and it has some speakers connected to this as well. And the, the output from it goes to my projector, which is next to my bed. This is a, a BenQ W1000+. The image doesn't come out rectangular because it's not in line with the, the wall. It's tempting to replace it with a projector that has uh, some kind of lens shift or horizontal keystone correction. But this one's pretty good. So that's what the AV receiver's for. The, the speakers, there's, there's one over there, um, and that's what this one is right here. And then the sub is that big box in the corner under my desk. So also connected to this, uh, this is a free view receiver, so I can watch live TV. Um, Raspberry Pi is plugged in to, to the AV receiver as well. Uh, the, these few things are all connected to the Raspberry Pi. So this is my home automation project. Eventually I'll tidy this up uh, and I'll make it look neater, but I'm still kind of building this right now. So this is a, an original Raspberry Pi from like 2012. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, so it's got a TP-Link nano router acting as a, a Wi-Fi dongle plugged into it. And then this little breadboard, which has some infrared LEDs on it. I've got a separate series uh, on the stuff I'm working on here. But the reason it's plugged into the AV receiver is because it's running this tool called Spotify D, which means it acts as a, a Spotify Connect client. So from my phone or my laptop, I can play music using Spotify Connect through the Raspberry Pi, and then it'll play through the, the AV receiver and therefore through the, the speakers that are at either side of my room. Above this stuff, um, a, a fake plant, this is not real. This is a, a Korg Nano Key 2, it's a little USB keyboard. And this is Nick Leddy, who I believe is a, a New York Islanders ice hockey player. I got that when I went to New York a couple of years ago. This side, this is where all my cameras live. The one that I'm using would usually sit here. This is why it's kind of half empty. At the back, that's a big lens. GoPro Hero 4. The cameras I do use to vlog with uh, at the front is the S120. This is the, the first one I bought. This is pretty battered, but it still works. I've dropped this a lot of times. This is the, the G7X, which I got next. Um, this one has a smashed screen, but it does still work. Uh, but then this is the G7X Mark II. Haven't broken that one yet. Then the camera I'm using is the Panasonic GH5. These are Kallax shelves from Ikea, uh, and on the top. This is an air purifier. I might sell this actually because I don't really use it. I, I don't think it's big enough for this room anymore. This is a Joby Gorillapod, the, the biggest one, which is suitable for, for this camera, the GH5, uh, and then a, a lamp with a Philips Hue bulb inside. The art which is on the wall came with the flat. This is like a, a metal shed next to the sea. And this one is a, a seagull on the top of a lamppost. Not what I would have chosen, but they're alright, I guess. Underneath 
uh, some folders, ring binders, box from the microphone that I'm currently using. Various like video bits and pieces, a, a Rode microphone there, uh, and then batteries, uh, an Amazon Fire tablet thing in here. There's an Anchor USB port thing there, which is where I charge all the stuff. The set of drawers uh, that the, the projector's on, um, nothing really interesting in here, it's just all the stuff that's usually in my pocket to dumped in there. This is where all my camera batteries are separated by whether they're charged or not. And my selection of books at the bottom, a few old programming ones. Of course got the, the new Turing Omnibus, which was pretty much the extent of the recommended reading list when I started uni. I didn't read it though. In my wardrobes, obviously a lot of clothes. Got shirts in this side, uh, spare cushions, sleeping bag up there. In the bottom, this is a, a bag full of camera equipment, some tennis rackets, which I want to use more but never get round to doing. And then at this side, a couple of rucksacks uh, and my ukulele is in this case at the front. More clothes, uh, and then at the top, this is where all of my cables are, in these labelled boxes. This thing's like a flight case. Um, what's in here again? Oh, it's got my old mixer in here. I should probably get rid of this. I don't really use it anymore. And it's got a really old video camera. This is what I used to make my YouTube videos on. Record into mini DV tapes. On this shelf, this is another box of random, mainly video accessories. An empty tub there, some headphones. Behind it are, are cleaning things. And then that box underneath, that's a drill. I bought this drill ages ago from Ikea. Uh, and the only thing I use it for is putting holes in the wood that's under my desk so I can tie new things onto it. This bag here is full of GoPro accessories. All of this stuff, got all the various mounts, uh, the, the head strap thing. In the drawers, uh, a lot of stationery in this one. Got various assorted pins, staples. This is my childhood label maker, which is what I still use to label things, like those boxes with the cables in. The drawer underneath has various computer accessories, a couple of cans of compressed air for cleaning things, an iFixit screwdriver set, a little electronics kit under here, so this is full of LEDs and resistors and cables, cotton buds for cleaning things, uh, a USB DVD drive, CD wallets, uh, and a lot of screen protectors, a little air blower to clean things, various travel plugs. This is a jar of adapters, this is actually an empty Nutella jar. A lot of batteries at the back, got some isopropanol, which is just like alcohol to clean stuff with. More cleaning sprays, a lot of whiteboard markers. If you've been watching my videos for as long as six years, now I appreciate that won't be many people. But when I first went to Cambridge, I, I bought those stick-on whiteboard things. You like tear off a whiteboard from a roll and it holds on the wall with static. And I bought a lot of whiteboard pens and it did an old video. The pricing was ridiculous. It was like one box, oh that one's empty, one box for five pounds. Or, or two boxes for nine pounds, or 20 boxes for 15 pounds. So I ended up with like a lifetime supply of whiteboard markers. And hiding in the back is a pack of floppy disks. Now I actually have a genuine use case for these things, which I'll show you later. Continuing this way, uh, this is my whiteboard. This is a, a suction cup IKEA toothbrush holder, which holds my, my whiteboard markers and the, the cleaning spray. And then inside is my ensuite bathroom. This is a two bedroom flat, so we've got like a bathroom each. It's a little bit excessive. But I've got loads of cupboard space in here. I've got a shower. I've got a Bluetooth speaker on the wall here for when I'm in the shower. This is another suction cup thing from Ikea, but it refuses to hold on to this wall. Uh, so it's it's hanging off the, the shower controls with some string. Moving on from the bathroom, back over to my bed. This is a king size bed. I didn't choose this. This is just part of the flat. If it was up to me, I'd have a smaller one because it's like, it's just me in it. But it's pretty nice. I can't complain. The other side, lamp. Also got a Philips hue bulb inside, another fake plant. There's nothing interesting in these drawers either. It's like remote controls in this one, and this is just full of command strips. I wish I had a better place for this stuff rather than just like on the floor, but this is a bag full of lighting equipment, lighting stands, and then a big tripod on top. Above this lighting equipment uh, is my YouTube play button for, for reaching 100,000 subscribers. In front of the window is my keyboard covered up to keep it clean. This is a Technics KN2000. Now this is really old. This is from, I think it's from like 1991. So this is older than me. I got this as a birthday present when I was like seven or eight or something like that. I had piano lessons for like 10 years when I was younger. So I, I can play this. As you can see, there's quite a theme of having old things here. Like my stuff just doesn't break, so I don't see a reason to replace it. 
obviously a new one would sound better. This doesn't have weighted keys or anything. Um, but th this is my keyboard. This is what I've been playing my whole life. And this is what the floppy disks are for. So this has a floppy drive in it. And you can, you can record things to this. And then in the menu you go to disk load and you can load them again. It's got a 16 track sequencer. And I, I still genuinely make use of this today even though it's like 25 years old. The stool is just a cheap one from Ikea. And then the other speaker which I mentioned earlier. This throw is also from Ikea. Pretty much everything in here is from Ikea. And I think that's about it. That is my flat. I'll put links in the description to all of the things that I've mentioned if you're interested to know a little bit more about them. Yeah, hope it's been interesting. Thanks for watching.